to everyone. We are going to continue. We've taken a little break from our topic of Yoga Maya. We're going to continue. And I hope the internet is all right. It seems to be we had problems yesterday. If there is a problem, let me know. It seems my video is freezing, which is not a good sign. So if you can't hear me as of last, as that happened yesterday, let me know. And we're going to continue now our discussion on Yoga Maya and uh, how Yoga Maya acts, particularly now we're in the leelas of we're getting pretty high, specifically in discussing Rasa Leela and the whole philosophy, which we partially discussed, why the devotees, the some of them couldn't go. And also there's some pastimes of how Yoga Maya works within the, the, the leelas of separation, which creates more love, basically, and, and Krishna explaining why, how he responds, how he feels when he sees his devotees in separation. It's very, it's very sweet. So, can you hear me? Video bit chop sound is good. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not sure why the video is chopped. It's uh, every day is a new day and a new experience with my internet. So, I have the best internet possible that I could possibly have, and it's not good enough. <laughs> so, what to do? Sometimes it's good enough, sometimes not good enough. We just have to tolerate this. Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Shamini Namane Namaste Sharashwati Devi Gauravani Pacharine Nirvise Sasanyavari Paschati Dasatarine Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adaita Garadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adaita Garadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhupada and the Shia Day to get out her, she was sure to go back to Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Rama Rama Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Ramo Hare Ramo 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare 
Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare Itai go premanandi Hare Hare Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Simati Bhakti Vedanta Shamini Tinamane Namaste Sharashati Deve Gauravani Pacharini Nirvise Sasanyavadi Paschadi this time. So if, if at any time the sound is not good, please tell me. We're having um, internet issues. I don't understand why. I'm not a technician, but every day is a new day with my internet. I restarted my computer. I reset the modem. Sometimes you try to make something better, you make it worse. So it was probably better before I did all that. Okay, so we're going to continue reading. And I actually know where we left off. Aren't you proud of me? 
I marked it in red. My computer is really not happy. It's very slow. I don't know why. Kind of feels like I feel today. Also, my computer is mimicking me a bit slow. Okay, I'm just uh, trying to locate that section where we left off. Um, oh, you know what happened? <laughs> no. I had it set in red, and I took the red off, I think. And then I restarted my computer, so we're in trouble. Um, I have to guess now where we left off. I guess we're going to read something we read before. Mm. I'm getting close. I know we're two days ago. I have it where we were two days ago. Oh, you have nothing to be proud of now. Okay, let's start reading. I thought I was so proud of myself that I actually marked it. <clears throat> and then because it was marked, I thought I don't need to mark it, it'll be confusing. I removed the marking and then my computer couldn't get online, so I had to restart it. And then I went back to where we left off, thinking that it was the wrong place. Let's just see. When we go back to Godhead, we won't have these problems. Okay. I'm just going to read, uh, hopefully, where I think we left off. How Krishna remained, uh, this is on page 80. Of course, maybe Nadia or someone actually knows. Is Nadia here to save me? The absent-minded professor has returned. I was like so proud of myself. I, today we're going to have it. Perfect. Nadi's not here. Okay, so let's start reading. And as normal, as usual, if we've already read it, we'll recognize it. Actually, I think it's a kind of a good practice to reread what you read a few days ago, just to remind yourself. It takes me about three times of reading something to really get it in my memory. How Krishna had remained in Vrindavan and simultaneously displayed a twofold departure from it was a source of bewilderment for the greatest demigods. But for the devotees absorbed in one of these three pastimes, Vrindavan, Nava Vrindavan, Dorka, their experience was of one Leela, the one appropriate to their relationship with Hari. And once again, Yogamaya arranged for the devotees to see the Leela favorable to their rasa. So that shows us that whatever your rasa is, Krishna will reciprocate with it. He won't force any rasa upon you, but what is your, whatever your taste is, then you get that. So, um, and then here the other point is that everyone's satisfied whatever their rasa is. It's not that the queens of Dwarka want to be gopis in Vrindavan. It's not their rasa. Of course, esoterically they do because they're actually gopis. That's another topic. That's another thing, but... Well, it's not that you'll get back to the spiritual world and say, oh man, I should have chosen another rasa. I'm so stupid. Why did I choose this rasa? Now I can see everyone in that rasa. It's so much better. Well, you know, if you're worried about that, choose Madhurya Leela, conjugal love, because that's the best. You know, shoot for the top and see how it goes. Okay, that's what Mahaprabhu came to give, right? So it doesn't hurt to shoot for that. So this is actually where we left off. Um, Krishna thought of the gopis who were sadhakas in their previous births. Yogamaya arranged for them to have the company of the eternally liberated gopis, the holy Tulsi plant and the forest of Vrindavan. Thus they attain pure love for me. So, 
and this was Krishna's thinking, Yoga Maya arranged for them to have the company of the eternally liberated gopis. So we were talking about this, which you may know that the Vedas personified, wanted to become gopis. The sages who saw Lord Ramachandra in the Dadnir Karanya forest were so attracted, it awakened a conjugal desire, and they wanted to enter the Vrindavan and the Rasalila and become gopis. So that's what's being described here, that they were not perfected beings yet, but the perfected gopis had descended from the spiritual world, so they, they got to associate with them and by their association become purified. And this is, this is how they attained love. And the reason I put this in there is because it is said, Krishna's thinking, Yoga Maya arranged for them. So she satisfied their desires. And this is such a beautiful thought. We were talking about this a little bit yesterday on the um, Japa. There was a quote from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, something to the effect that Krishna satisfies Whatever the devotee wants, Krishna will give, of course, in the spiritual realm. And that thought is the most reassuring thought, because no matter what our position, how fallen we are, whatever, if we simply have the desire to be pure devotees, that desire will be fulfilled. If we have the desire to enter higher stages of Krishna consciousness, that desire will be, we be, will be fulfilled. It's just a question of when. But we should know it for sure that it is our desire that's really the, the center point of our success and not think, well, I'm so unqualified and maybe Krishna doesn't like me or how will I ever become purified, and et cetera, et cetera. But rather, we should have the confidence that it, if I can maintain my desire in spite of my fallenness, then Krishna will fulfill that desire. He will arrange that. And here, we find out through the agency of Yoga Maya, he arranged to fulfill the desires of the Vedas personified and the sages at the Rishi Muni Charis. They're called the sages at Indanikaranya. And we'll read more about that later as they say in England, later. Now, this next quote is interesting to see how Yoga Maya works. In this quote, we find that Krishna wanted to do something, but Yoga Maya had another plan, and she thought it was better he didn't do it. While the residents of Dwarka anxiously waited for Krishna to return. Krishna resumed his pastimes as a cowherd. Only repeated inducements of Yoga Maya could move him to continue his trip west. According to Srila Rupa Goswami, Bhagavatam 1.11.9 refers to Krishna, Krishna's repeated visits to Braja, including his most recent visit, most recent visit just prior to this entrance in Dwarka. So, um, mm. as far as I understand, this yoga maya is moving Krishna to Dwarka, although he doesn't want to go. So sometimes <laughs> you might say, why did Krishna do something? It doesn't seem that that was the kindest thing to do, and so forth. And here we find out, because sometimes it's what Yoga Maya wants. So Yoga Maya is actually making it happen. So that's good to know, you know, if you if you think, oh, that, that seems what Krishna is doing is not fair or not proper or whatever. Why did he do this or that? One answer, at least in some situations, is that Yoga Maya induced him to do it. So she induced him, as far as I understand, to go to Dwarka. We have been discussing a little bit about going back to the spiritual world, and we're going to read a pastime, just a brief description of Uddhava going from Dwarka here 
on this planet to Dwarka in the spiritual world and how that happens. So in my study, this question came up. This question to Prabhupada came up. We had talked about this before, but I want to read exactly what Prabhupada said. The question, will we remember our time in the material world? Prabhupada says, yes, this is how it will be when we go back to the spiritual world. All of our past, past births, all the miseries and so-called happiness will seem like they never happened. We will simply join Krishna's pastimes. You know, from the material concept, you're thinking, well, you know, I want to remember my kids, my wife, my friends. You won't want to, believe me. It will, it will only, in your, if you could remember in your mind, it would just be a, a, just like a dream. Like, you're awake. Why would you want to remember the dream? But here Prabhupada is saying, you won't remember. And, um, he describes that also in the fifth chapter of the Bhagavatam. You just kind of, it's like go, you go to sleep and you wake up. Your death is like going to sleep and then you wake up and there you are. So, and if there is any remembrance, there isn't any. It's like, oh, okay. You know, like I said, you know, you're chanting around so you nod out. You don't really realize it and you just wake up and continue. Kind of like what happened? I don't know. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Why dwell on it? Why dwell on it? So here is a description of Uddhava going back to Godhead, which will be enlightening and interesting to read. Uddhava would cry and cry and cry until one day, by Hari's will, he too would enter Aprakata Dwarka. Aprakata means apricot. It doesn't mean apricot. Aprakat means unmanifested. Prakat means manifest. Manifested means, prakat means here, we can see it. But it's called aprakat because it's not manifested here. And so aprakat refers to the leelas, the eternal leelas in Goloka, not on Bhumi, Boma. Boma Vrindavan, Boma Dwarka, and then the eternal Dwarka, the eternal Vrindavan. Uddhava would cry and cry and cry until one day, by Hari's will, he too would enter the Prakrata, Aprakata, Aprakata Dwarka. There, Uddhava would again behold the glory and majesty of that divine abode. Again, he would see the towering domes, the massive city walls, the profuse, auspicious decorations. Once again, as if he had never left, he would walk its streets greeting the members of the Yadu clan with smiles, words, and embraces. Isn't that interesting? He's in Dwarka, Boma Dwarka, and there he is in Aprakat Dwarka, the eternal Dwarka of the spiritual world. And it's as if he never left there. Like It's like <clears throat> two ways you can look at it. You, when you go back to Godhead, you forget everything, as Prabhupada said. Or the dwarf on this planet is the same, and it's not in the material world. So when you go there, you, it's, it's the same dwarf. This is, I put this in, it all helps us kind of conceptualize the spiritual world a little better because I know it's so difficult for us because we only have experience of this world. And so conceptualizing the spiritual world sometimes is mind blasting. It's like a, there's no, you know, where's that compartment in my mind for the spiritual world? Well, someday you'll get it. And this is part of the process of getting it, is just hearing about it. Then, while standing by the city gates, looking out across the sea, he would hear the rattle of chariot wheels and that long, familiar voice, like honeyed thunder. Cousin, I must return to Vrindavan this instant. Won't you come along? And Uddhava would turn to see that beautiful person for whom his heart had yearned for so long. That one glimpse would be enough to end all of Uddhava's sorrows and sufferings. He would stand by the roadside looking into Krishna's smiling face, feeling that this was too good to be true. My Lord, Uddhava would say with joined palms, unable to finish his sentence or to move due to ecstasy. Then Krishna would catch hold of Uddhava's wrists, 
pull him upon the chariot, embrace him, and wipe away his tears. With a cheeky smile, Krishna would whisper into Uddhava's ear, I was looking for you everywhere. Were you hiding from me? Uddhava would look into Krishna's eyes, but would be un- Uddhava would look into Krishna's eyes, but would be unable to reply. Where had he been? He would have a sense of having been away, but it was only a feeling. By that time, Yoga Maya would have covered Uddhava, and he would have forgotten his sojourn into the Prakatalila. So that's that. I was forgetting why I kept saying it's kind of like you know, but you don't know. Here it's explained. I'll read it again. It just answers this question. Will I know about the material world? Will I fall back down? Will I want to go? The answer is no, no, no. If you can just get there, all your problems are solved and you don't have to worry about anything else. So I would suggest getting there in this life because, you know, why Why have to do it in another life when you could do it in this life? Where had he been? He would have a sense of having... Uh, he would have a sense of having been away. But it was only a feeling. In other words, there was no concrete information. There was no understanding. And then what's being said here, he'd have this sense, that, you know, I kind of feel like I've been away. And then Yoga Maya would cover Uddhava. And he, you know, he's like starting... He's, have, he's not remembering from what this is saying. He's not remembering. It's just a sense. Oh, did I fall asleep during japa? Then Yogamaya comes and covers it like whatever. You know, it's just like, oh, you read a book, you fall asleep, and you don't realize it, and you wake up. Oh, was I sl- I must have been sleeping. Oh, whatever. And you just, he just forgets. So I like that passage that describes. So now if anyone asks you, what it's like to go back to the spiritual world, you, know, you can relate this story to them. It was like, as we began reading, it was like he never left. Krishna's Dwarka associates, like those of Vrindavan, were combinations of his eternal associates and expansions of demigods. If you remember Krishna book, Krishna asked his eternal associates to take birth as demigods and then from the demigod planet descend here. So there were they combined with the demigods, that's the the way they descended to this planet. When the intimate, or at least some of them, when the intimate relatives of Krishna, like Devaki and Devaki Rohini and his queens, gave up their bodies at Prabhasa, only the partial aspects of the demigods that had merged into them departed. Krishna's eternal associates remained in Dwarka and entered Krishna's Aprakata Dham. <clears throat> really, they never left. I mean, they were here, but they were there, as far as I understand. Yoga Maya perfectly directed all these simultaneous events beyond the vision of all those even slightly touched by the external energy. This is commentary by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur to the 11th canto, 31st verse, chapter 19. So, if you saw a body, so-called body died, that was the demigod partial aspect of themselves. And they went back to their demigod planet. And then the eternal associates, obviously, you could say they went back my understanding is they expanded to come down. So they were always there. But that expansion went back and merged. Now, this section is called Prakat Leela in Aprakat Leela. Leela's, and we had discussed this a little bit, but <clears throat> not elaborately, Leela's in the spiritual world that resemble Leela's in the material world. There's a many, many, many leelas in the material world. It's not the material world. On this planet, Boma Vrindavan, there are many leelas there that do not take place in the spiritual world. And Prabhupada said, but there are rumors of demons. And so we're going to read here how Krishna enacts these leelas so that they're not real. 
They become rumors, but they are real in a sense, at least temporarily. Krishna's pastimes of bliss would continue in his aprakata abode until one day, Akura, so, that's, so now we're in the spiritual world, so this is one, you know, there's no time in the spiritual world, and, and we say, and once upon a time, Krishna went, and I, wait a minute, once upon a time, it's eternal time, yeah, but anyway, time exists to please Krishna, so if one day is necessary, then there's one day. One day, Akura would again appear to take him to Mathura, just like it happens on this planet. Srila Sanatana Goswami writes about this in the Brihat Bhagavatam Rita. Quote, In the same way as before, Akura once again took away the life of Braja and its residents, attained the same state, excessive pain from sorrow. How is it that Krishna leaves Aprakat Vrindavan in Goloka? For Krishna's pleasure, pleasure, Yoga Maya manifests Kamsa, so that Krishna can enjoy the sport of killing him. You know, it's like, it's a boy, he likes to fight. Give him a break, come on. And Akura is manifest to transport Krishna from Braj to Mathura. Mathura. But as soon as he kills Kangsa, Krishna hears about how the Brajbasis are suffering without him and at once returns to Vrindavan. The inhabitants of Mathura forget that Krishna had killed Kangsa, just as the residents of Braj forget that Krishna ever left them. Perpetually, this same sequence of events repeats itself. In Aprakat Goloka, these comings and goings of Krishna are but brief interludes to enrich his eternal residence in, not resident, residence, residence. Dense and dense, the people who reside in Vrindavan, to enrich the residents, to enrich his <laughs> his leelas in Vrindavan, to you know make his leelas more tasty. But in his Prakat leela, Krishna leaves Raja to become a resident of Mathura and Dwaraka, only to return on occasional visits to Raj or until Brahma's prayers again call him to a universe somewhere in his creation. There, in the material world, Krishna would manifest his prakata pastime. So in other words, what's being described, or just to summarize, this is a leela which gives Krishna pleasure. So he goes, um, there's this, Yogamaya creates a kamsa, there's a, there's a akura, and then there's a matura, and then... Well, there's Matura in the spiritual world. And then Krishna goes, kills this so-called Kangsa, and then comes right back. Had some fun, kind of like, let's go to the beach today, and then we'll come back. So he had some fun, and Matura comes back. As we know, in the Prakat Leela on this planet, the Boma Vrindavan, he goes and he stays away a long time. He does come back on several occasions, but here in the spiritual world, he immediately comes back. And in that Prakat Leela, Krishna would eventually leave Vrindavan for Mathura, and then he would leave Mathura for Dwarka. And again, the residents of Braja would be plunged into an ocean of misery. And for every tear the Brajbasis, Brajbasis, Brajabasis shed, you could say it V or B, Sanskrit is Vrajavasi and Hindi and Brajbas and others would be Brajabasi. Brujubash and Bengali would be Brujubashi. And for every tear the Brujubashi shed, Krishna would shed a hundred, for he would miss them a hundred times more than they would miss him. Okay, so this is another significant point. When whenever we see separation, we see that there's suffering. And naturally, we think, Krishna, why don't you just go back to Vrindavan because they're suffering? But then we learn that Krishna in Dwarka is also suffering separation. Then it makes you know, it's like, well, he's God, he could go back, and he's suffering, and he can't control it. 
this is all the arrangement of Yogamaya, and we're going to read more about this, but this is a significant point, that Krishna is feeling the pain a hundred times more. So when you're thinking, why is Krishna doing this? First thing to remember is he's feeling more pain than they are, a hundred times more. So that's so there, there's a reason for it, and the reason is to help them increase their love. And Krishna's going to, we're later going to read Krishna's description of why. And um, in that description, you'll hear Krishna saying how much pain I'm in, but how this, this is helping them. And so I have to tolerate the pain because this is good for them. So it's important to understand. Thus, impelled by love, Krishna would constantly write the Brajbasis, repeatedly visit them, and arrange for them to visit him. And when he could no longer tolerate their separation, Krishna would, would conclude his Prakata pastimes and take the Brajbasis back to the, his Aprakata Dham, and there he would be with them eternally. So here, you know, then this answers the question, why did Krishna end his pastimes? Well, you could say because he felt that his job was done, but the internal reason is, is that he couldn't bear the separation. So it's a two-way affair. Love is a two-way affair. Um, yeah. And so we here we see that it's good to see these leelas from both sides because Krishna is suffering just as much as the Brajbasis. And the other thing I think we can see here is how the love of this world is is a perversion of that love. And, you know, you see a boy and a girl together and the love is very intense. And if the girl's suffering, the boy will come and help her. If the boy's suffering, the girl will come and help. And they sacrifice so much. We see that story with Uddhava. Uddhava was, Krishna was wiping the tears from Uddhava's eyes and talking to him in such a loving way. And so, obviously, that nature of love is coming from him. And so we should never think Krishna's cruel, look at the separation he's putting in the Brajbasis in and so forth. And now we understand that, and we will understand more. He's doing that for their benefit, and he's also suffering so much so that eventually he, he can't take the suffering anymore and goes back to Godhead. Of course, he also goes to the next Leela and suffers more. And Anyway. That's another thing. So, we are going to read a story which is very intimate and probably we are not really entirely qualified to read it. But I will do my best to explain it. And one time Prabhupada said, sometimes you read these things even if you don't understand and it begins to wear away a little bit, at least it opens up another dimension of prema, because prema has many dimensions, and it opens up another dimension of what prema is and what the leela is. So this is, this is a story. Um, actually, we're not going to read the story. I'm sorry. I don't think I have the whole story here. Let me see. I, I forget what I put here. Oh, yeah. Um, I have to tell the story. I didn't put it in. Okay, so we're we're safe. I will just summarize the story. So, Krishna was scheduled to meet Radharani, but it was dark and rainy, and he couldn't meet her for hours and hours and hours. And... He finally came, and she was so angry with him. And he was, he was, he said, he said, I couldn't come because of the rain. And she said, look at the scratches on your body. This means you were with another gopi. And he said, no, you're the only one. I have no other lover. He said, it was so dark out. It's so rainy, I couldn't see where I was going, and I was running into thorn bushes, and that's why this happened. Please believe me. So it was a, it was a very pathetic scene, and Radharani is like, forget you. I don't want to see you. And she was so upset. She was wearing a black sari, and she took it off because she didn't want to see black. 
she took down all her mirrors because if she looked in her mirror, she'd see black hair. She didn't want to see black. She had bluish black bangles. She took them off. She was completely frustrated. And she was so angry at Krishna. And Krishna was just begging, please, please. This was not... It was, I didn't do this on purpose. I wasn't with the other gopis. You're my only lover. She didn't want to hear anything. And then... I'll read what happened. Just then, impelled by his own good sense and guided by the counsel of Yogamaya, uh, a snake comes. So in other words, a snake comes in where Radha and Krishna are having this fight. A snake comes, impelled by Yogamaya, and Radharani is completely frightened by this snake. Ah! I think it was a cobra. It sounds like it was cobra. So let me read. Krishna says, well, I'll, I'll explain what happened. Maybe it's explained later, but let me explain it now. So, so, so what happened when Radharani saw this snake out of fear, she jumped up and hugged Krishna and said, save me, save me, save me. <laughs> different leelas like that it's all part of this is all part of how you understand love separation and fighting and then some impetus to come together so this is what Krishna is saying when I, and, and the point was Yoga Maya was trying to figure out what to do to resolve this and so she inspired the snake to come and scare Radha so Radha would jump on Krishna's lap Krishna says, when I saw the snake, I searched for some means to save Radha. Therefore, it is difficult to say what happened next. Everything moved so quickly. Within the blink of an eye, I observed Gorangi hanging from Shambhashundra's neck. Save me, oh, save me. Maybe that's Yogamaya speaking. Somebody speaking. I forget who is speaking. Maybe that's one of the gopis speaking. Sri Krishna seemed unconcerned about the snake, but he was extremely pleased at the turn of events. Fate had fashioned an extraordinary garland to hang gracefully around his neck. Now there was Radharani's the garland. I did see him cast a sidelong glance of gratitude at our friend. He seemed to say to the snake, I am, ever, I am forever indebted to you for this service. Dear friend, from now on, consider me yours. Therefore, I say that this great soul is the intimate servant of Radhe Sham and the savior of Vrindavan. Rather than faulting him, we should sing his glories. We should learn from him the art of uniting Sri Krishna with his beloved. At the conclusion of this lovely pastime, the snake became elated by Sari's appreciation. So this is Sari, I guess Sari is... Shari... I'm not sure who Shadi is. I didn't put the whole story in. Sorry about that. He raised his hood and began to sway to and fro, dancing to the sound of Hari's name. All the birds joined him, and for some time there was a blissful kirtan, celebrating the servant of Radha Krishna meeting. So what a valuable service this, this, this snake did, but the reason I put it in, as I said, is because this was entirely arranged by Yogamaya. Okay, so I will now see if you have any comments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Should we write a song? Krishna misses us a hundred times more than we miss him. That's a problem. Hmm. I'm just going back now. See if there's any comments. I'm good at missing comments. Actually, I'm expert at missing comments. It's one of my great talents. So I see a comment from Christie. Prabhupada said only 10% of souls fell down to this material world. So once we go back to Godhead, would the other 90% know we fell? 
Are you going to be embarrassed or something? You walk back to Godhead with your head between your tail. No. Now that's a whole other question. Where do we fall from? But anyway, don't worry about it. Once you're back there, you're back. And that's all that matters. Okay. Okay, okay, so there's no comments, so we can continue. You've all probably fainted by now, which is why there's no comments. Okay, so if you've fainted and you've just regained consciousness, you'll probably faint again when we read the next one. Anyway, what can I do? I apologize in advance. Okay. So I I found uh, there was a question, the question that we had discussed earlier about Shubhadra's position, because Shubhadra sometimes manifests as Durga. And we also have heard that Shubhadra is Yogamaya. And um, it wasn't clear to me Shubhadra's position is Yogamaya, how it manifests. And I just read something today which clarified it, so I will read that. In Vrindavan, Yogamaya is personified in the form of Purnamasi the grandmother of Madhu Mangala, so that we know. And in Dwarka, this is I didn't know, she appears as Shubhadra Devi, Krishna's sister. So she, in um, Dwarka, she's doing the work, she's, she's doing the Yogamaya work as Subhadra, and in Vrindavan, she's doing it as Yogamaya. In Braj, Yogamaya's power of eternity reaches its summit. Power. In other words, basically, she can do whatever she wants. To facilitate Krishna's complete absorption in pastimes, she even makes him forget his godhood. So if whatever is necessary to increase the love of Krishna for his devotees and increase the devotees increase the devotees' love for him. Yoga Maya will do that. If it's remembrance, if it's forgetfulness, whatever is required, she will do it. And Subhadra will do that in Dwarka. Now here, there's a sentence. It says, how could he not know their sacrifice? How could he not know the sacrifice of the gopis? The sacrifice refers to the gopis' suffering in Krishna's absence. And why Krishna allowed them to suffer so much when he deliberately left the rasa dance. So that was the original point I was making, and here Krishna answers that. You know, like why, if you ever meet Krishna, say, well, when I go back to God, this is one thing on my mind. I really need to ask him, why did you allow the gopis to suffer so much? Why didn't you go back and pacify them? And this is what he'll tell you: separation helps their bhakti. The gopis asked this question, why, 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 why? And you know what the gopis said? He said, that's okay for those who are not liberated, not the eternal associates, but the, the ones who have come to Braj. That's good for them, but why us? So we have to find out more. Stay tuned. So... We're going to talk about the Rishi Chari Gopis. These were the sages in Dandakaranya who met Lord Rama. As I said before, previous classes, this is a little... We skip around a lot. If we were to read all these leelas, I don't think everyone's really ready for all of them, especially now that we're just very focused on the gopis. It's, it's not like recommended we just do this. Of course, this is not the only thing we've discussed. So we've minimized that discussion, try to philosophize with it as well. So I will continue reading about the Rishi, Rishi, Chari, Gopis. Now, by the Lord's plan, having taken birth from the wombs of qualified Gopis, having reached puberty and having gained proper association, some of these Rishi Chari Gopis acquired fully developed Purva Rag. Purva Rag means the attachment that appears in lovers before they ever meet. 
So like you hear, like Rukmini heard about Krishna, attachment develops, but they've never met. So these Rishi Chai Munis, they develop Provarag, they fully developed their love, which means they were qualified to enter Rasalila. So they've come from this state of being Munis, they enter into Brajlila. And they come to this point in Brajlila at puberty where now they've developed Porvarag. And so that means they're qualified. To them, Yoga Maya gave impotent, impotent husbands who, when their time for the wives, excuse me, who, when the time came for their wives to meet Krishna, were unable to stop them to go into their rendezvous with him. In other words, they were qualified for the Leela. So Yoga Maya said, okay, you're going to have husbands who can't stop you from going to the Leela because you're qualified. So just see how Yoga Maya is like on top of everything. Man, if you had Yoga Maya running your business, whew, you'd get a lot of things done and it would be really blissful. Okay. Now, we are going to read about the gopis who had husbands who blocked them. Why? This is all, this is all maybe new for a lot of you, but just to review what we've been discussing is that when you reach the stage of bhava, in order to perfect, well, you can go beyond bhava, but the material body can't contain all the emotions of prema. So if, if you get prema, you just go... Oh, explode and go back to Godhead. Not exactly like that, but if generally you can only advance, uh, conditioned souls advance to the stage of bhava, and then they go to the Boma Lila and, and, and there they practice. They associate with the eternal associates and then they develop their Krishna consciousness further and they come to prema, prema. There's no more practice. Even bhava is a practice. Prema, there's no more practice. So, now, listen to this. What we had just described were not all of the Rishichari Munis. Some were not as advanced as others, and they were not, they didn't have poor Varag, and they were not able to go to the Rasa dance. So now we're going to read about them and see how that played out. Other Rishi Charis did not have the good fortune of perfecting their association with Hari. Thus, they were not freed of material contamination and could not immediately reach the stage of prema. As the indwelling witness, did he not see these gopis enter the company of their husbands, become pregnant, and in time give birth? Later on, did he not arrange suitable friendship for them so they could discover the treasure of first love, Purvaraga? By such purification, did these gopis not cast off their material bodies and acquire fully transcendental forms qualified to worship him? So, you remember we've discussed that these gopis cast off their material bodies because they could not go to the rasa dance because they're, they were not pure and therefore not pure enough yet to go and therefore by the arrangement of yoga maya they had husbands who prevented them. This was all her arrangement. They're not bad guys. They're just, she's in control. And then it's described that they cast off their material bodies. So it didn't, didn't mean they no longer existed, but we'll read what it meant, what it means, just to clarify this. By such purification, did these gopis not cast off their material bodies and acquire fully transcendental forms qualified to worship him? The concept of the Shuti Chari Gopis. Casting off the, oh, this is Shuti Chari. So ah, I made a mistake. I'm going to change this. I think this is well. Shuti Charis are the four Vedas. So I'm not sure. Don't quote me on this. Whether some of the Rishi Chari Gopis made it and didn't. I may have written the wrong thing here because there's no indication here, actually. 
that the Rishi Charis didn't make it. It's the Muni, it's the Shruti Chari, the personified Vedas. By, so here's the question. By such purification, did these gopis not cast off their material bodies and acquire fully transcendental forms qualified to worship him? So here's the explanation of what it meant to cast off their body. The concept of the Shruti Chari gopis casting off their material bodies should not be equated with physical death. This reference also arises in the example of those Shruti Charis who could not leave, and that's what I was mentioning, but were restrained by their husbands. Sima Bhagavatam 10, 29, 10, and 11 uses the word Jaho Guna Mayam Deham, which means they gave up the body composed of the modes of nature. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur argues that if many girls had died that evening, an auspicious beginning would have been created for Rasalila, inauspicious. Thus Sri Krishna would not permit death from separation. Furthermore, the concept of giving up the material body can be understood as a gradual spiritualization of the gopis' forms, proportionate to their increasing love. As the gopis' love increased, whatever traces of impurities remaining within them was extinguished. When all material qualities had ceased, their bodies became fully spiritual, their material bodies having fully terminated. This is the meaning of giving up the body composed of the modes of material nature. That's from Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 29, verses 10 and 11. So that is clear. They didn't die, they just their material contamination died and they were left with spiritual bodies. When these same Rishi Chari Gopis heard the sound of the flute, they too became demented women. In other words, as I understand, what's being said here is first they heard the flute, they couldn't go. They gave up their material contaminated body, they're left in their spiritual body, and now they're hearing it again. And this is what happens now. Casting, is, whether they heard it the next minute or the next day or whenever, the next season, it sounds like it happened right after this. Casting aside family duties, they ran to meet Krishna through doors, out windows, and down loud ladders. It's quite a scene, huh? Could you imagine that? You know, Krishna's playing his flute. You you have a you see Krishna playing his flute, and then you flash on the scene of the gopis' helms, and one's like climbing out of a ladder down the from the window. Uh, one's jamming out the door. One's jumping out a window. Wow. Restrained from meeting Govinda, these gopis saw their family members as enemies, and while standing on the verge of death, they prayed, O Priya Saka, O life of Vrindavan forest, if we cannot meet you to behold your lotus eyes, allow us in a future birth to become your maidservants. For now, simply looking upon you within our minds, we shall embrace you to our hearts. Thus lamenting, these gopis stood with eyes shut, meditating upon their only love. Okay, so what this is explaining, excuse me, this is explaining how they gave up their material bodies. And this is what happened. Uh, so they couldn't go, they're running to go, but they can't go, and then this is their experience. And this is how, uh, because of, of wanting to go so badly that that anxiety to meet Krishna, it removed the last traces of contamination. Did he not know the Rishi Charis who became purified by the fire of separation? Did he not award them purely transcendental bodies? Was it not he who inspired Yogamaya to arrange for their guardians to be negligent? Did he not give them intelligence to follow the perfect gopis who had left earlier to heed the call of the flute? So here it says, that once they became purified, then their relatives were negligent, so they could go. A little, I I cut and picked a little bit from this story, so excuse me for not being clear. And what about the last category of Shuti Chari Gopis, those who were un, who were un, unable to leave their homes upon hearing the sound of his flute? Because they were still influenced by the adverse opinion of society, their love was affected. Thus, they were not qualified to meet him. They're somehow, 
they were conditioned by the strictures of society. They were allowing themselves to be restricted. Who else but he came to them within their hearts, embraced them, and bestowed the happiness of his touch? Who else but he inspired them to bear the fire of separation? Who else but he would greet them on the appropriate night when after having been purified through ordeal, fully spiritualized, they gained Yogamaya's consent to meet him? So they all got to meet him. It's not like you're going to go to Braj and you're a gopi and you're not going to qualify. You're not going to get the gold medal. Like Everybody gets the gold medal. It's just there's a process that some have to go through, and we're reading that process. And it's saying here that Krishna was helping them all along, embracing them within the heart. It was Sri Krishna alone who appeared in the hearts of these gopis when they meditated upon him. In that condition, he embraced them and inspired them to tolerate the cruelty of their family members and the pain of his separation, lest they leave their bodies. By his touch and the fire of his separation, they became purified of family attachment and dove into the ocean of unconditional love. So they needed that separation to get to this stage. When Yogamaya noted their pure loving disposition, she immediately made arrangements for these gopis to meet Krishna on its nightly rendezvous with the gopis. This is Krishna Chakravarti Thakur's commentary from 10, 29, 10, 11. We're still reading that. Yeah, so... so this helps us understand how separation was necessary. And, and so Yogamaya created that separation. And then Krishna came to them in their separation. And through that separation, they became purified and thus qualified. And Krishna does Rasalila every night. So it's said here, uh, now every night uh, they would be able to meet Krishna in, to, in the Rasa dance. And that would be arranged by Yogamaya. So everything has a happy ending. And if ever you think it doesn't have a happy ending, then you could know that you just aren't understanding it properly. And so hopefully with today's class, we've understood it more deeply, why separation is necessary and how it pains Krishna to see his devotees in the pain of separation, but how it's necessary to purify them. Listen to the next part. It's interesting. For the gopis with infants... Sri Krishna assured further immunity from their husbands. By making them appear like haunted beings, he gave them relief from breastfeeding. By urging their families to shun them, he freed them of all domestic responsibilities. And finally, it was he and only he who enticed them to enter the circle of his eternal paramours. So he made all these arrangements. You know, these arrangements that their families thought they were crazy and they just like took the babies away from them and took care of them so they didn't have to. So uh, we see that sometimes when someone joins Krishna consciousness. Oh, so many problems, but Krishna you know, adjusts and makes this arrangement and this and that. So they can become devotees. So, so um, Again, we go back to that point. If our, if our desire is to become a devotee, and if that desire is strong, then we should know for sure that Krishna will help us. Right? It's a sunny day today. A lot of sun coming in. So we should know that Krishna will help us. And, and that, to me, that is the most reassuring and um, beautiful reality of Krishna consciousness, that Krishna is always there to help. So, I'm going to go back and see if there's any comments. A comment from Christie. Not that much about embarrassment, but rather the time concept. Would they notice we were gone? Or is it a little like Blink of an eye for them. Yeah, don't don't worry. They won't notice. You can, Krista. You can worry about something else. Uh, definitely, when you go back to Godhead, this will not be your worry. Your worry will be, where's Krishna? I want to see him. That will be your worry. Not like, like, does everybody know who I am? Like, this is embarrassing. I'm not going to be like that. Okay, 
So we can continue reading. There's just a little bit left to read. Uh. So now this is Krishna. We get a little insight into Krishna. It's just one more thing I'm going to read. We get a little insight into Krishna. We may have to end class early if there's no questions because this is all I plan to talk about today. I, I had to prepare some other things. I could tell you what I was preparing. If we have no di more discussion on this, it was quite an interesting. Not fully prepared, but interesting. So this is Krishna speaking. My dear girls, understanding that simply for my sake you had rejected the authority of worldly opinion of the Vedas and your relatives, I acted as I did only to increase your attachment to me. Even when I removed myself from your sight, this is this is during the Rasa Leela, because the gopis are complaining, like, why did you leave us? You know, we gave everything. And then you just leave us here. And Krishna's explaining why. I acted as I did only to increase your attachment to me. Even when I removed myself from your sight by suddenly disappearing, I never stopped loving you. Therefore, my beloved gopis, please do not harbor any bad feelings towards me. Your beloved. This is from 10. Canto, 32nd chapter, text 21. So this was the gopis expressing their, what's the word, discontent or <laughs> wonder or like how, how could you do that? You know, don't you realize we've given everything to you? How could you just like leave us? And this is always Krishna's answer. I left to increase their love. I left Vrindavan to increase their love. They're actually in more ecstasy now that I'm gone. But when I do that, you should never think that I, I'm not loving you. I do it because I love you. Don't have any bad feelings towards me. That's, that's how we're going to end class today. And tomorrow, we're going to have class in Russian, and it's going to, we're going to talk about the topic of motivation in bhakti and how sometimes we're motivated by pain and how pain is a good motivator, but it has limitation because it can interfere with the development of the pure desire of bhakti to serve Krishna purely. If we want to become, if we're motivated by becoming free from pain, if that's the, the sole motivation or the main motivation. So we're going to talk about it tomorrow. And there is an advertisement for that because I don't know, I, we're doing it with another group it's another group of Russian devotees who are organizing it, so I believe they have a different website, and we will have to arrange, I think, Nadia, you can arrange that it gets broadcast on our Facebook page, if you can do that, and if that's the case, then just tell Radha Priya and she can advertise that. Okay, so. Um, uh, I can't stop loving you, Phil Collins. Um yeah, that's why, that's why when you hear the words to love songs, it sounds so familiar to what is going on here because this is the original. That's the perversion. That's the original. So it's, it's not um, impossible. Or it's not. It's not, um, not impossible. It's not unlikely. It's, it just makes sense. Any, any love song you hear... It has its origins in the love Krishna has for his devotees. That's where it comes from. So naturally, it'll sound similar. And sometimes, you know, you're reading Bhagavatam and you, and you see oh, there's so many love songs in these verses. And it's not that people who write love, love songs are reading the Bhagavatam, but it's the same sentiment. It's just, it's just for someone in this world. It's not for someone in that world. That's the difference. Okay, so we have a few minutes left. If there's no more questions, I'll just wait a second if you have any questions on this topic. Um, I'll tell you what I was studying, which caused me to stop studying, uh, doing a few other things. Early morning email, just to get some things out of the way. But I've been asked to speak on a topic liberal and conservative. I mean, that's going to be on the, it's going to be one o'clock this Saturday on the late morning program show with Nama Rasa. 
And so I decided that we should first, uh, uh, okay, we have some comments here. Krishna's doing the same to me. For half a year, I've been unsuccessfully trying to move to another city, another community. Krishna stops every single moment. Yeah, increase your separation from devotees, your appreciation of devotees. So, um, you know, if you're if you're going to discuss something like liberalism and conservatism, well, first thing you you have to define what it means. And so, I pose the question. Is liberalism and conservatism, is it defined as we commonly understand it politically or even religiously as commonly understood? Is it defined that way by Prabhupada? And lo and behold, I found that the word liberal is not defined by Prabhupada the way we define it. So if I say Prabhupada was very liberal, you might say, how can you say that? He was very conservative. But Prabhupada, by his own admittance in an interview with Allen Ginsberg, said, I am very liberal. And Allen Ginsberg said, no, you're very conservative. And Prabhupada said, if I were conservative, uh, I couldn't do what I'm doing. He said, no, I'm very liberal. So Prabhupada's definition of liberal and Allen Ginsberg, Ginsberg's definition of liberal were different. So what did Prabhupada mean? Well, Prabhupada said something funny to Allen Ginsberg. He said, actually, you are conservative. By his, de you know, by, by general definition, Allen Ginsberg was very liberal. By Prabhupada's definition of the word liberal and contrasting uh, this specific definition of conservative, which is not the only definition he used, but this specific definition was, you are not following the regulative principles and you don't want to change, therefore you're conservative. Conservative means generally conservative means you want to stay the same and liberal means adaptable so Prabhupada's definition of conservative in this context was that a person who is not willing to give up illicit sex intoxication gambling meat eating is conservative because he won't change he's stuck with that he just wants to stay the same so that's interesting right of course that is a common definition of conservatism, but it's generally not applied to liberal agendas like that. So Prabhupada's definitions were different. So how did Prabhupada define liberalism? Um, Prabhupada used the word liberal as a synonym to broad-minded. And liberal and broad-minded means, like Lord Chaitanya gave Krishna consciousness to everyone, we don't discriminate on the basis of the body. We're accommodating. We give Krishna consciousness to everyone. We see all forms of life equally. We, we um, protect animals. We're broad-minded. We, we protect all forms of life. Like e, e, a, a true ecologist will, be, will have to be broad-minded, liberal in that sense, to, to not exploit any living entity in any form. So that's how Prabhupada defined liberal. Of course, the purpose of this discussion was to, to discuss liberal and conservative as it applies to the, um, how a devotee applies Krishna consciousness to their life, not in this more philosophical sense that Prabhupada used. But I just wanted to share that because I thought it was interesting. That's, that's the only way Prabhupada used the word liberal. He didn't use the word liberal in the sense of degraded, he used it in the sense of adaptive, like he let women live in the temples. That's liberal. Conservative people would say, no, you can't do that. That's Conservative is okay. So he is using the word conservative as we use it. It's a tradition. You don't change it. Liberal is adaptability. Of course, that's also somewhat of a common definition. But the way, my point is the way Prabhupada uses the word liberal in many instances, is not exactly how we would use it. But liberal, in Prabhupada's definition, as opposed to conservative, was adaptive. But Prabhupada did also say that conservatism, being conservative, is good. It depends on the context. 
you know, here's a tradition. We shouldn't change this tradition. It was helpful. So be conservative. Don't change it. So the, the discussion, that was, that was the first layer of my study on that discussion. So we have some questions. And we'll answer these questions, and then we will end class. Amazingly, usually on, <clears throat> usually, yeah, well, Friday we usually go longer. Okay, question from Para Ananda. Six Goswamis said that our mood is always to seek Krishna. How to maintain always being in separation when we ultimately want to meet Krishna? Well, first thing is, when we use the word separation, just like when we, we use the word liberal, we have to ask, what do you mean by it and what's the context? Because the separation that predominantly is being described, perhaps entirely, let's just say predominantly, there may be a few exceptions, is the separation of particularly Mahaprabhu in the mood of Radharani at the separation of the gopis, sometimes the separation of Mother Yasoda. Coward boys, you'll, you'll get, but the most intense... Most usually it's the separation of the gopis and the separation of Radha and the separation of Mahaprabhu. So that kind of separation obviously is a result of love, of prema, the very high levels of prema. So if we are talking about separation and trying to understand it practically within our lives, it's not going to be the same thing. Contextually, it's going to be different because we don't have prema or bhava. So... Now, what do we feel separation from? I think we feel more like separation from separation. Like we feel separation from the fact that I don't feel separation. We feel separation from the fact that I don't have love. So it's not a byproduct of love. It's a consequence of not having it, that I'm feeling separation that I can't see Krishna. I want to see Krishna. Prabhupada said you should want to see Krishna, but at the same time, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta said you should act in a way that Krishna wants to see you. So, you know, we have to be careful about separation. If you, if you feel separation from being a better devotee, from better sadhana and so forth, that's good. I feel so, I, I'm, my rounds haven't been good for the last few days. I'm feeling separation from chanting good rounds. So that... That word is used differently and in a different context. But that separation is good because it inspires you. So we can't really experience separation until there's attachment, affection, emotion towards the object that we're now separated from. Having said that, definitely the emotion a devotee feels in separation from their spiritual master can be very intense, very strong. And because we do have lots of affection for our spiritual master, lots of love, we do experience that kind of separation. And as I've said previously, that this is the magic of, <clears throat> of what Krishna creates when one, it, in, in the process of having a guru, because Krishna is saying, okay, you don't love me, but you can love this person. And, and before you're qualified to love me, very quickly you can love this person because this person is giving you Krishna and this person is attractive and this person is helping you and this person is merciful to you. So naturally you will love him. It's just you don't even have to try. And so because you will have some affection for that person, probably more than affection for anyone you have, or at least equal, if not more, for anyone you have, then you will feel separation and that separation will cause you, will help you. So that separation will help you. So that's that's... Krishna's mercy that we can feel separation when we don't actually have Bob or Prem, but we feel it for our spiritual master and that inspires us. But then Prabhupada, he kind of brings in some sobriety to this by saying, well, if you actually love your guru, then you will follow him because you could feel separation from not following him. You know, I'm such a bad disciple, I don't follow. I, I'm missing my guru. When he was here, I followed and so forth. That's not really, you know, obviously you're feeling some separation, but that's, that's not the kind of separation we want to feel. That's more, that's 
It may not help unless it helps you. If that kind of guilt helps you, that's good. But rather we um, we may feel uh, separation because of our deep attachment. Uh, I want to be with my Guru Maharaj. I want to serve with him, but due to COVID, I can't, etc. So that's good. That helps us. But, uh, okay, so yeah. So that liberal discussion is going to be interesting. It's going to be so interesting that I don't even know everything I'm going to say yet. I have to think about it more. Prabhupada's the most liberal, liberal amongst the sadhus, that's for sure. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. So not... Nadia is saying, there are many, many reasons that she can't go to that ashram. Yeah, I would look at it that way. Yeah, so, so, um, Parananda says, I do feel separation from good sadhana and good rounds and if you're not reading enough or serving properly or serving enough, that separation is good. It's obviously not the separation that Shastra is describing, but that kind of, we can call it a kind of separation that helps. Um, another kind of separation is that I don't have love of Krishna, but I want it. And, and so I'm feeling separation from the love, which as I said is different because real separation means you have it. And that separation is increasing the love. This is separation from the love, but it creates a space, and that space creates a desire. So if you have that space of separation, I don't have love of Krishna, I want it, then that's in the mood of bhakti no takur, kabe habi bolo se dinama, when or when will I get it? So that is also a proper mood. And that's the mood of separation for those who don't have it. And that's that we can equate to that. That's our level of separation. When when will I chant good rounds? When will I cry when I read Bhagavatam? When will I, you know, become so Krishna conscious that that people will become devotees just by my presence? When will I become so intelligent that I figure out how I can make hundreds of thousands of people Krishna conscious? When will I become so humble that when hundreds of thousands become Krishna conscious, I won't become proud? Like that we can pray. Mm. Sadhya Rupa says, I think for me, Krishna created difficulties so I don't take things for granted when I'm better situated or give up when difficulties come. Yeah. That may be there. But I would also say, for both, for all of you, um, and we've talked about this before, it's always important when difficulties come to look more carefully, are these difficulties self-created or has Krishna made these arrangements? You know, maybe in some cases it's totally obvious that Krishna made these arrangements. Like he didn't want me to go to this temple. Everybody had COVID, so he saved me. But then we have to ask ourselves in other situations, was it actually a mistake I made so something didn't happen? And, um, okay, it's, it's creating separation. Did Krishna inspire that mistake? That's even possible. I, th- I believe sometimes Krishna, I've made mistakes that were definitely Krishna inspired. Like I didn't, I, I once was going to send money to something and it would have been a bad thing to send the money to. It was like an investment. I would have lo- probably lost the money. And I wrote the wrong address and the letter came back and then I realized Krishna doesn't want me to send this money. Yeah, so sometimes you can make a mistake and it can actually be Krishna's arrangement. He caused you to make the mistake. I wouldn't use that excuse often, but sometimes it's obvious. So you have to ask yourself, was it my foolishness or was it actually Krishna's arrangement? Um, hmm. And then Krishna says, I really appreciate the beginning Krishna kept me with no personal association nor temple. Now I appreciate every second at the temple with the devotees. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we're going to end here. Nice to see you all. Tomorrow, class will be at the same time. 
I think some devotees got sidetracked. We we don't have as many devotees as we normally have. They kind of got... I put a message up on Facebook. But look for the ad for tomorrow's class. Nadia, you could make sure that ad goes up. I give it to Radha Priya to put up when we get the uh, link, if it's not already up. Separation. We are feeling... Parananda, I'm feeling separation from your bass guitar. No. I don't know if that's real separation, but I'm feeling separation. Not that I want it. I want you playing it. Okay. I just checked where Americans can travel to because my daughter probably will be gone in the summer somewhere in America. There's a preaching program she might join. So my wife said, well, you know, if she's gone, and we could travel. And I said, okay. So we went and looked as of today. Europe is shut down everywhere, except for Ukraine. Every, everywhere else we can't go. We can go to South America. You all want to go to South America? But it'll be winter in some places. Well, not in Colombia. They don't have winter in certain parts of Colombia. But so that's the latest news about my travels at least, yeah, tra could travel in America if need be. I don't know if it's really needed. But just the idea came up. So keep me posted, everyone, when your country opens up. Maybe we'll do something. Maybe we can pull something off of COVID. You know, uh, I have a thought on COVID, on the vaccines. Um. I think it would be a great service, and maybe this has already been done, but, you know, there's a lot of talk about what's in the vaccines. The problem is there's a lot of bad stuff in things that we use. You know, things that we ingest and things that we breathe in. There's a lot of toxins in that. I think some of you know that apples are colored red by the use of cockroaches. So that's a, not a happy thought. But if anyone has any information on that, I think it would be nice to post because there's obviously concern about vaccines and their ill effects and what goes in them. But I think there's a lot of stuff that goes in things we may take for granted that are very unhealthy, toxic, carcinogenic, and so forth. So if anyone has that information or would like to study that, that would be useful for us because the vaccine... The vaccine, the vaccines have stimulated, you know, this discussion. Of, well, there's so many contaminants in it, apparently, or different vaccines have different contaminants, or less or more. And then I was thinking this morning, yeah, but there's a lot of contaminants. Sometimes um, when they're doing fracking and getting gas out of the earth, it contaminates the air. It's very unhealthy. You know, there's like so many things. Hare Krishna. So, um, anyway, that's just a thought. Um, Paran Ananda says, vaccine in these times is very risky. I think everything is risky in these times. I think we're up to 2.5 million deaths. Of course, someone may say, well... You know, some of the deaths got labeled as COVID, which weren't. And obviously that's true. But still, you know. <laughs> no vaccine. Don't get COVID. Vaccine, get COVID. Vaccine, get something else. No vaccine, get something else. I mean, what's, what's really certain? Not a whole lot. Anyway, we all make our own decisions. We do our best. We want to preserve ourselves. For Krishna's service as we think best. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Uh, vaccines are toxic. It's true. And one God brother said to me, have you had any vaccines as a kid? And I said, yes. He said, are you still alive? I said, I think so. He said, well, yeah. So that's another angle on it, you know. It's, they are toxic. We never gave vaccines to our daughter. She just got all the diseases, but she built the immunity to them. But uh, there were real no serious 
there weren't really any serious diseases to worry about. But, uh, yeah, in my generation, we all got vaccines. Yeah, maybe it's compromised our health. Maybe we're alive because of it also. Who knows? Anyway, that's each individual make their decision. And your decisions, I just read something yesterday. Uh, I just read something yesterday. It was a really interesting thought. No, I heard something from an intellectual. He said, people don't have ideas, ideas have people. In other words, an idea floats around, you link onto it, and now you say, this is my idea, when it's actually the idea of a group or the idea of a person. So I thought that was an interesting idea, you know, that, that often our ideas are not our ideas. It's, you know, we're reading certain things, and so we get ideas, which we think are ours, but they're actually other people's. Which may be good ideas, maybe not such good ideas. Uh, that's another issue. But I thought that was interesting. You know, we don't have ideas, ideas have us. Something to think about. Um, in Europe, many deaths by vaccine. Yeah, I think they're like, I don't know, in the world, I think, yeah, a few thousand people have died. Well, that's a lot less than a half, than 500. How many people have died? A couple, billion, a couple million have died from COVID. Yeah. So, you know, these are all things to consider. Okay, Hare Krishna. We will see you tomorrow. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.